spot. At first this photo just looks like a silly good time between two boys, but what happens next is when it gets kind of crazy. The two in the photo are brothers, Michael and Sean McQuilkin, and it is from August 20th, 1975, when they were at Morro Rock in Sequoia National Park in California. The photo was taken by their sister Mary after they all thought that their hair standing up was absolutely hilarious and decided to snap a few photos to remember the moment. Well, they surely will never forget it because just a few moments after after this photo was taken, they were actually struck by lightning. One of the brothers said that he raised his hand into the air and that the ring he had on was buzzing, and then suddenly they were all on the ground and smoke was pouring out of Sean's back. The good news is that they all survived the lightning that day, but I bet it certainly wasn't the day that they had planned. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting, and the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our 7th spot we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. 
The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number 3, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. Starting off this countdown, we have Jeffrey Bezos. In 2019, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, admitted that his nudes almost got leaked. Basically, someone got a hold of some steamy text messages and nudes that he sent to his girlfriend, and they tried to blackmail him with it. But before they could do so, he came out and admitted what he had done. And he described it in detail. One of his texts said, and I quote, I love you alive, girl. I will show you with my body and my lips and my eyes very soon. Now, any person, celebrity, billionaire or not, probably doesn't want their nudes getting leaked. On top of that, Jeff was married at the time that this information came out, so it looked pretty bad on him. But he claims that he was separated from his wife before dating his new lady. Either way, Bezos didn't want us to see that side of him. And frankly, I don't want to either. In our number 9 spot, this photo was taken by David Seymour in 1948. This photo was taken in Warsaw and the child in the photo is named Terezka, who was in a home for emotionally disturbed children after being raised in a concentration camp. The drawing on the blackboard is what she drew when the children were asked to draw home. While it is obviously common for children to have indistinguishable drawings, her backstory and the look in her eyes really tell a story. I hope she was able to grow and overcome some of the horrible things that she had been put through. I really wish I could know exactly what she was trying to draw and depict. In our number 8 spot, this is a photo from 1991 and is of Rajiv Gandhi who is the 6th Prime Minister of India. He took office after his mother had been assassinated and was the youngest Prime Minister at only 40 years old. This photo was taken by a 21 year old local photographer named Haribabu, but little did everyone know, this would be the last photo he took and the last photo ever taken of Rajiv. Moments after this photo was taken, the woman in the bottom left corner with the orange flowers in her hair approached Rajiv and when she 
she bent down to touch his feet, she detonated a belt of explosives that she had on under her dress. This explosion ended up killing them all and around 13 other people. Haribabu's camera ended up staying intact throughout the blast and this is how we were able to retrieve this photo. Coming in at number 7. This photo carries quite the backstory. This photo is of Violet Spears who was born in Elgin, Scotland in 1839. She was married at 15 and by the time she was 22 she had 4 children. At 33, her husband ended up passing away due to a hunting accident and Violet then packed up her and the kids and went to her sisters where they all remained for 2 years. After these 2 years, Violet just disappeared from her sisters, leaving all of her children behind. No one heard from her for a year after she left, but money began to be sent to them monthly. In 1876, a medium and hypnotist named Madame Violet began to gain popularity in Edinburgh. She had a small following at the time that she she called her hive. Slowly her seances began to get more elaborate and outrageous and she slowly began to ask clients to donate small bits of blood saying that it helped her connect to the spirits. She would actually drink the blood given to her and she has been quoted saying that this element returned to me had been missing my whole life. Eventually her hive grew and they all ended up living together and would only come out at night. They would attract and convince men and women, usually with the help of drugs and alcohol, to donate a bit of blood and most often would convince these people to leave their lives to come and join the hive. The hive continued to grow for the coming decade but when the son of a prominent councilman joined the hive and ended up developing an infection from the bloodletting and actually died, the hive was condemned and they ended up being disbanded. Madame Violet ended up living until 1930 where she died at the age of 90. In our number 6 spot. This photo comes from what is left of the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. This prison used to be the most famous and the most expensive in the world but now this is the sort of thing that is left of it. This prison is actually now used as a tourist attraction and it becomes a haunted house during Halloween. The prison used to house some pretty high profile prisoners such as Scarface himself, Al Capone. The prison was opened in 1829 and was known for its advanced technology for the time. Things like central heating, flush toilets and shower baths in each cell. These were all considered luxuries in 1829. The first prisoner to be held there was Charles Williams who was facing a two year sentence for theft. When he arrived at the prison he had a hood over his head so as to protect his identity but also so that he wouldn't know what the rest of the prison looked like so he would be unable to plan an escape. While prison is never good, the craziest thing about this specific one is that all the prisoners lived in isolation. I can't even imagine what that would be like, especially for the people who found themselves in there for long periods of time. Number 5 this photo is a series of self portraits by the artist William Utter Molin. In 1995, William was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, which is an incredibly difficult thing to have to go through. William's self portraits obviously reflect a lot of what was going on in his mind during some of the last years of his life. Part of what Alzheimer's does is that it affects the part of the brain that we use for visualizing things, which is part of the reasons why the paintings began to get so different from the original. This series of paintings is actually sometimes used as a study material for medical students because it does such a wonderful job at portraying something that a person without Alzheimer's wouldn't be able to understand. I think William left the world with something very sad but also beautiful, poignant and important. Number 4. This photo comes from the 19th century from the third plague pandemic. This was the first time that the plague had spread to all 5 continents. While we now know something about what that might have been like, what we haven't had to endure are doctors that are dressed like this. This is a photo of the outfits and masks that plague doctors wore when they would come to your house to treat or diagnose you. The long beak like noses of the masks are very creepy but they were used to hold herbs and other nicely scented things because they believed that this would help ward off the bad air which at the time is what they thought was causing the sickness. The covid-19 pandemic has been bad enough so I'm very glad that our doctors and nurses can stick to their scrubs and regular masks. There's something about these outfits that just make it seem like something bad is about to happen. Number 
Number 3. This photo looks like a big lump of nothing, but it is called an elephant's foot. Don't worry, at first I was worried, but it has nothing to do with elephants and is only named that because of its appearance. This lump was actually created from the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown and is just a mass of corium and other materials that were in the core of the reactor. This elephant's foot was located in the steam distribution corridor, which is under what's left of the reactor. While this mass doesn't produce as much radiation as it did before, it does still produce a deadly amount, but it is said that if you stood in front of it for just 300 seconds, that would be enough to get a lethal dose of radiation. It's kind of crazy that even though they knew this, they were still standing there taking pictures of it, but I'm glad because now we get to see it and it gives us just a little more insight into what happened that day. Number two. This photo is of a man named Chris McCandless, who may be better known as Alex Supertramp. Chris was a traveler who inspired the book and movie Into the Wild, which were created to follow the story of his life, and more specifically his final great Alaskan adventure. This photo is unfortunately the last photo taken of Chris while he was on this Alaskan trip, and he ended up passing away in the wilderness. A lot of people have speculated that this photo was taken as his sort of goodbye. It is highly debated how he died, so there isn't quite a concrete answer of what exactly exactly happened to him. It is a very unfortunate end to such a young man's life, but he left quite a legacy. His story has inspired countless people and holds a special place in a lot of people's lives. He was a man who rejected conformity and materialism, and with his life and death he really left an important message for all of us to take a step back and remember what is really important. While the story has such a sad ending, there is also a lot of beautiful things that we can take from it. And in our number one spot today. This photo was taken by Fred Blackwell on May 28th, 1963, and is actually showing us a moment of protest. The three sitting at the counter are Joan Trumpor, Ann Moody, and their sociology teacher, John Salter. The reason why this photo is so important is because these three are sitting at a white-only counter at Woolworth's Five and Dime store in Jackson, Mississippi, while being assaulted by an angry mob. People are throwing condiments at them and I'm sure saying some pretty nasty things. Things. The two students went to Tougaloo College, which was a black college that ended up being at the core of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. It's amazing to see how brave they are and a photo like this really is such an important message for us to remember today. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our ninth spot, we have Naked Prince Harry. Before Harry met Meghan, he was quite the wild royal and troublemaker. Back in 2012, naked photos of Harry partying up during his trip in Las Vegas got leaked online. Prince Harry was photographed playing a game of strip billiards with his friends in his VIP suite. In the photo, we see Harry holding his junk, while a naked girl stands behind him holding him. In another photo, we see the backside of Harry with his arms wrapped around the naked girl. I wonder what the queen had to say when she saw these photos. Yikes. Coming in at number 8 we have Bill Clinton. It's no surprise that a number of high up powerful wealthy individuals had ties with Jeffrey Epstein, including Bill Clinton. If you don't know the whole Jeffrey Epstein scandal, I suggest you look into it, but it's hella dark and disturbing. He forced a number of young individuals into doing things with him and his friends and anyone else with a lot of money. It's believed that Bill knew what Jeffrey was doing and was a part of some of it. Here is a photo of Bill with one of Jeffrey's victims, Shantae Davies. When the photo was taken, Davies was only 22 years old. She is seen rubbing Clinton's shoulders while they all wait for their plane to Africa in 2002. Apparently, it was Ghislaine Maxwell's idea for the young girl to help Bill out with his stiff back and give him a massage. Although Davy said that that's the most intimate that she got with Bill, it's still a very compromising photo of him. Having connections with Epstein in the first place tarnishes his reputation, one of the reasons why he has tried to bury this part of his past. Moving on to 
number seven, we have topless Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, well, seeing a guy topless is nothing scandalous, but a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook shirtless? Well, apparently Mark was really embarrassed when this photo got leaked, and his coworker that leaked it accidentally got in trouble. Let's take a look at this photo, shall we? Sorry, Mark. This photo was taken at some weird private party. The shirtless Mark is surrounded by a number of other shirtless dudes. Like I said, it's not even a bad photo, but Mark was not happy about it going around. Apparently, it was accidentally posted by Facebook's director of engineering, Andrew Bosworth. As soon as he realized it had been leaked, he took it down immediately, but the internet was too fast and screenshotted it. In our sixth spot, we have the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove is a secret and controversial club that meets in the California woods every year. The club consists of a number of rich men. Among the attendees are past and present presidents, government members, and business leaders. It's kept very hush hush. What happens at this retreat thing stays there. Some say it's a cult where they do human sacrifices among other illegal and spooky things. But since no one has yet infiltrated the club, we still don't really know what goes on there. But there are some photos that have gotten leaked, like pictures of a number of the men in weird cloaks surrounding a burning effigy, to pictures of some of the members seated around a huge dining table. Since this club is so controversial, I doubt the members want their pictures from the club leaked. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Mark Zuckerberg surfing. I'm pretty sure you all have seen this photo of Mark surfing in Hawaii. It became a viral photo and a meme. Why? Well, because Mark has way too much sunscreen on his face. He really packed that on all over his face and it left a very noticeable white cast. I mean, good for him for taking sun safety seriously and you know, skin cancer is no joke. But due to the fact that he became a laughing stock over the photo, I bet he didn't want anyone seeing those photos in the first place. Plus, it kind of ruins his reputation. Like, it's hard to take him seriously with that photo floating around and all the jokes associated with it. Coming in at number four, we have Kate Middleton's topless pictures. Looks like Harry isn't the only one in the royal family to stir up some controversy. Back in 2012, Kate and William were in France vacationing when the paparazzi took some photos of the pair. In the photos, Kate was sun tanning and she was topless. The paparazzi then sold the photos to the French magazine Closer, who then published them. Obviously, she and the rest of the royal family were horrified and took legal action. In the end, the magazine company had to pay 100,000 euros in damages for publishing the photos. And two staff members were fined an additional 90,000 euros to pay to Kate Middleton and Prince William. Pretty sure every copy of this photo has been destroyed. And for Kate's sake and privacy, let's hope it stays that way. In our third spot, we have Barack Obama's party. I didn't know Barack Obama was a big partier, but these photos prove otherwise. Just this year, Barack Obama threw a huge birthday bash for his 60th birthday, but it caused quite the uproar. Why? Well, photos from that night show a room packed full of maskless people in the middle of the pandemic. Especially since Barack is a huge political figure, you would think that he would set a good example, or at least practice what he's been preaching. Either way, Obama was under fire after photos of him dancing at this epic party were posted. In our second spot, we have Prince Harry's inappropriate costume. Prince Harry was quite the royal troublemaker back in the day, making headlines with a number of scandals. Well, back in 2005, Harry was seen dressed up in a Nazi soldier uniform while attending a costume party. The costume consisted of wearing a red Nazi insignia on his left arm. Here are some of the photos from that night. Not only that, but he was photographed drinking and smoking in the outfit, which looks really freaking bad on the royal family. In the end, Prince Harry did apologize, saying, and I quote, I am very sorry if I caused any offense or embarrassment to anyone. It was a poor choice of costume, and I apologize. Let's just say that this is definitely one picture that Harry certainly wants to leave in the past. And in our number one spot today, we have Bill Gates. Bill Gates is another wealthy man who had ties with Jeffrey Epstein. Photographed here is a picture of the two at Jeffrey's Manhattan mansion in 2011. 
Over the years, Bill has denied his relationship with Jeffrey, but the two were friendlier than he likes to admit. Apparently, the first time they met was in 2011 after Epstein pleaded guilty to some of his crimes. But that didn't stop Bill from becoming close with him. He then proceeded to hang out with him on a number of different occasions. He went to Epstein's Manhattan town at least three times, one of those times being late at night. What were you doing there, Bill? So late, huh? He also flew on Epstein's plane a couple of times. In 2019, Gates said, and I quote, I met him. I didn't have any business relationship or friendship with him. Which clearly wasn't the truth because they met repeatedly. But anyways, it seems like Bill doesn't want anyone to see any photos that he has with Jeffrey. He doesn't want to get roped into the legal and disturbing things that Epstein was into.